Yes. So um, you're also um, hailed as the first female police surgeon in Kenya, in the country. Uh, serious vibes, yes. heavy stuff. Mm. So we'll, we'll talk about the P3 form and victim compensation in terms of injuries. Mm -hmm. But before that, uh, take you back, Kidogo. There's something you mentioned about forensic medicine for the dead. Yes. So there's medicine for the dead. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Amma, this is what they mean by go well. Like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. As in? <laughs> it's just forensic pathology. Oh, yeah. not, not like medicine. <laughs> not medicine. You we don't proper. medicate them, no. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's an important clarification. Okay. But then, uh, in my, I'm a simple-minded man. Yes. Uh, before we talk about the P3, uh, when someone dies, right? Umeenda. Yes. Uh, this is a theory I had while researching con uh, for this conversation. Um, can death be used for treatment in this sense? Uh, tricking the bacteria that was almost killing you that you are gone Zia Chane now and then you come back. Can that work? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a theory. It's just a theory. Oh Please. Oh my gosh. You should study it. You should take it up as your research project. It, it, <laughs> in a, in a, it can hold some water. <laughs> Probably not. Mm. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, but it's worth a shot. Like that. It's worth a shot. <laughs> it's worth a shot. Yeah. In life you try what you want to try and then that's living. Okay. Sawa <laughs> sawa. When you come to your work with the police, right, I believe you can comment on that. Yes. Uh, victim compensation. You'll explain to us the P3 form and its relevance. Mm -hmm. But I took a particular interest uh, in an article I think you're explaining about how the P3 form works. You assess the magnitude of the injuries so mm -hmm. that when you come up with a report, uh, it will be used in the determination of compensation. Let's say if the victim anafaa lipwe, how much? Please explain to us how the magnitude of an injury determines compensation. Like, ingumi ilikuwa kilongapi, as in, what is, I thought injury is injury. What are the levels of injury, compensation, and when someone has been injured, what are their options? Um, well, I'll be honest, I don't really deal with the compensation aspect, but it does exist, especially for insurance purposes. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's start with the P3 form and yes. then the degrees of injury and how compensation um, takes place. Yes. So the P3 form is a Kenya Police Medical Report form. Um, sure, you've, you know, many people know about it because I keep hearing a lot of stories around it. Medical that, Report Form? Yes, Kenya Police Medical Report Form. Okay. And um, it has been in use for several decades. So depending on how you're injured, the police will give you a B plus or a D plus? Yes. <laughs> okay. No, I, I joke. So, <laughs> uh -huh. so uh, what happens is after someone has uh, sustained an injury, um, whether it's in a motor vehicle collision or from an assault or even a dog bite, a rhino bite, whatever, animal bite, um, they can report to the police, this has happened, get an OB number. Um, the first place to stop is a medical facility to get the treatment and also a, a record of what has happened and um, that is what should be taken to the police to report. It's always better to do it in that order. Yeah. Then they will issue an OB number and take a statement and also require that a P3 form is completed. So the P3 form is then taken to a medical doctor who is to fill it. Usually it should be a public service medical practitioner, but now I believe things have changed and uh, there may be other options. There is also the police surgery in Nairobi. It's only in Nairobi. There are no other police surgeries in the rest of the country. So at this place is where now the medical doctor there who is a police surgeon will look at your injuries, look at your medical records, your investigations, um, medical investigations, and um, come up with an opinion and document on the P3 form. Now on the P3 form, mm -hmm. there's a part that says, uh, you know, is, what is the degree of injury, harm, maim, or grievous harm. And these are well explained in the penal code. I encourage everyone to read the penal code. Uh, yeah, so there's also a section for sexual offenses. But uh, aside from sexual offenses, you're supposed to now decide as the practitioner, is this harm? And it explains what harm is. Um, grievous harm or maim. Grievous harm and maim really to me are similar and it's where there's been severe injury to a part of the body or loss of a part of the body or organ um, or a life-threatening condition. 
uh, occurred as a result of this incident. And then that now enters the police file and the case is, is uh, presented to the ODP, ODPP, the prosecution who will then proceed with the case um, through court. Okay. And then that's where now compensation discussions can come in uh, ah. at that stage. Based on the mm. assessment and a full report on that. Yes. Sawa, thank <laughs> yes. you. You're very big on justice. Yes, so, I am. Uh, let me introduce this to you uh, with a story I've shared with a few friends of mine. Uh, there is a text I came across about um, a, a piece of literature about a doctor from, uh, not a doctor, a university professor from a university, from a US, I think in Virginia, the University of Virginia. People can look this up. So this university professor, Alikwa in his 40s, then people notice change in behavior. Right, mm -hmm. uh, he started uh, getting uh, acquiring the services of ladies of the night, which was unlike him, Kabisa. And then uh, all of a sudden, he was in court because of a sexual violence case. Let's, uh, I think, let's say it's rape, right? Mm -hmm. And then a night before, the day before his sentencing, he alikwana headache. He had a very serious headache, mm -hmm. and then he was admitted to hospital, and he started making inappropriate uh, comments towards the nurses, right? But when he was taken to the theater for, for operation, they found out that he had a tumor growing in his head that was pushing his, uh, I think, prefrontal cortex. I'm, I'm sure you know about that, mm -hmm. that uh, deals with uh, managing in, in pro appropriate and inappropriate behavior. Mm -hmm. So that's what was pushing his urges, right? When the tumor was removed, the urges went away, right? Mm -hmm. So the explanation is this tumor is what pushed his behavior. Right? Mm -hmm. So when the tumor was removed, akakua sawa. Iso ajis zikaenda, became normal again. After I think at two years again, the ajis came. So this is someone who has committed an offense due to a medical condition. Is this person a criminal? Or how can such a case be handled? Should he be sentenced to rape? Or yanda eleweke alikuwa mgonjwa? Oh, that's interesting. Um, there are a few, you know, such cases have come up. Uh, but there are very few, very, okay. very few, a drop in the ocean of all the sex crimes, so to speak, or violent crimes. Can you attribute it to a medical condition like what you've described, a brain tumor or hormonal issues? Um, very, very few people can, can really be, you know, their, their act actions can be attributed to that. Most of them you know, are just perfectly normal physiologically and, and uh, physically. Okay. So what would happen, I'm not, you know, I'm not a judge or magistrate, so I can't really um, talk much about that. But what would be done, what would be important is for that medical condition to be brought forward to the court um, during one of the hearings so that it's presented to the court as a possible cause of uh, violent behavior. Okay. Then the court will then determine what to do with that information. Do we, um, should this person be sentenced to prison or do they need to go to psychiatric unit or, you know, what is it that's going to be done? But I believe they would still serve time. Ah. Yes, I do. For being ah. sick. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe so. Uh, it, and even if also, minimally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The evidence that you gather, the research that you do, and the investigations that you are involved in has mm -hmm. been very crucial in putting some very serious criminals behind bars. Kama uh, the case ya lawyer Willie Kimani, who was killed in his taxi driver and his clients, mm -hmm. uh, you guys were able to pin a suspect na hizo mafilters a cigara. Yes. Let's start with, uh, please explain to us this concept that people say that where forensic is involved, no one can get away with murder. Um, so there are two things. One is that there are different players in the field of forensics. Um, there's forensic accounting, there's, uh, you know, um, forensics in cybercrime, there's forensics in medicine for the living, for the dead, uh, there's forensic dentistry, and then you have government chemist, which is basically where your forensic biology sits. Um, as well as, um, of course, now with the police, they also do ballistics and, and all that fingerprint, fingerprint analysis. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, so now the government chemistry, you have forensic biology. This is where things, samples that involve saliva, blood, that's where they'll go to yes. conduct a DNA analysis. Yes. And the profile generated there will be compared with a profile collected from a suspect to see if there's a match. And I okay. believe that may be what, you know, that's what happened. 
And this is a science that you can't really argue with. Um, it would be difficult, but there's also room for having a second, third, fourth opinion where people doubt the first opinion. Uh, time, Amanda, but please allow me to ask you. Yes, please. Uh, just two brief questions. Uh, we move from human beings. Let's go to hyenas <laughs> for a minute. Uh, <laughs> for the hyenas, we've had cases, and I believe this falls right on your doorstep, cases of people dying during sex. Please tell us, what exactly kills people? <laughs> <laughs> Professionally. Oh Did your all your blood go at the same place and refuse to go back to the heart? As in, I'm, I'm, playing, I'm, play, I'm playing with some theories in my head. We've had those cases. So when investigating such, and I'm sure you're very well read, what do the rumors say? <laughs> it's a heart attack in layman's language. So, <laughs> it so still around... matters of the heart? Yes, yeah, still matters of the heart. <laughs> Yes, I don't have much um, <coughs> more to say no, about that. that. I've only seen like one or two cases, and it was a suspected oh, case. Suspected. It was suspected, yes. Oh, so at the end of the day, the conclusion will lead back to the heart attack. <laughs> yes, you have no. to figure out, was this infarction, um, myocardial infarction, was it caused by use of certain medications or his oh. condition, or what was it? So now that has to be assessed. There to, must to be a suspect. Because <laughs> it's not always the first time. It's always someone repeat. That's not a repeat of Enders. Like, <laughs> Nikitumutu ni ameenda. Has been doing many times, yes. Yes, alafu ikakushika mana moza. Probably, Akuna I don't know. prevention measures? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> rumors, exercise, ah, exercise, exercise. Take care of your body, remain fit, and you won't need to have all these cholesterol-related issues happening. That's disappointing to the hyenas. Most of them think that's exercise. <laughs> other, <laughs> other exercise. Uh, other exercise. Remain fit all the time. Yes, take care of yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Na kwa gender-based violence, final thing, please. Uh, kuna kitu, very controversial, gray area, uh, marital rape. Like, at being raped in a relationship. I, I don't know, it's a very sensitive subject. Mm -hmm. uh, please, in the briefest way possible, how does this happen? Or it's a yes, no definition, Ama in a relationship, you have to be, both of you have to be horny at the same time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Your question. It's just so too strong. <laughs> it's, 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 it's too strong, too strong. Oh, so marital rape. Yes. Is something, it's a very controversial area. But it is recognized. Even if you look at the protection against domestic violence, it's talked about there in, yes. in one of our laws. Yes. So what happens is, and one of the things that I was mentioning, is people don't really understand what consent means. Consent in terms of me, for example, a person, person A consenting to engage in sexual relations with person B. Yes, yes, yes. So consent has to be explicit and not assumed or coerced or forced. And so if someone, let's say person A, is being asked for to engage in sexual relations and she does not want to, she can say, no, thank you. But person B insists and insists and insists and insists or is outrightly violent and, and, and physically um, assaults her to get her to engage in sexual relations. So that is what um, marital rape is when, when the two people are married. They are, they are married. Men don't suffer that, yeah. Um, they do, actually, but uh, women suffer much more of that. So it goes both ways, but it's usually women who are the victims of marital rape. Okay. Yes, so it happens uh, a lot, mm -hmm. and it's also very difficult to deal with. So I think I've answered your question. Very well. Okay.